Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Sample Paper Discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. Well, as a part of this particular tutorial, we are still in Chapter 4 talking about some of the questions related to the test techniques of Set C and shall be looking forward to continue with further questions of this chapter with the relevancy to what could be the possible tips and tricks to that of the other test techniques related question. So let's move on. The next question we have is question number 22, uh, which says uh, you are working on a project to develop a system to analyze driving test results. You have been asked to design test cases based on the following decision table. So if you look at your right, uh, you find there are three conditions. That is this uh, first attempt at the exam, then theoretical exam passed, practical exam passed, and then there's three outputs, either issue a driving license or request additional driving lessons or request to take the exam again. And uh, if you see uh, the three tests which you have created, that is R1, R2, and R3, have some missing notations that what should be there, and that is what is the question all about. Okay, if you see uh, the question is what test data will show that there are contradictory rules in the decision table. So uh, I'll keep it very simple and straightforward. All you have to do is pick up the options, put it back into the table in all the three rules and see that if I put it in any particular table where it fits, right, for the three conditions, does it have anything contradicting? That means uh, if I go and put it in R1, whether R2 is a copy of that. So will it create a copy of something which already exists? And the one which uh, does that, we will have to eliminate it. Okay, the question is a little tricky. It says, once again, that what taste data will show that there are contradictory rules in the decision table, which means I need to find out that option which will create a copy of another. Okay, so let's start filling it up. So I'll pick option A. Option A says TTF, that means C1, C2, C3 represented as TTF. And in simple words, if I take uh, this as a combination, and uh, if I look into my table, uh, it does not match any rule. Because if you see the rule one, that is test one, I have two true, two true C2 and C3. But if you see in my option A, C3 is false. C3 is false only at R3. But uh, again, if you see C1 is true there, but they have hard coded it as false. So it should be, it can be at least false, true, false. This is not the option, okay? So first of all, A as an option does not fit into any of the three rules that is R1, R2, and R3 because that combination is not possible, okay? Because some of the hard-coded values are there and the missing ones we have to replace, okay? Let's go to option B. It says true, false, and true. True, false, and true is only possible in R2, okay? Because if you see, it clearly says the middle one is false and the other two values are missing. So true, false, true is only possible. But if I put it there, okay, the combination, uh, you know, has no contradictions because uh, I don't see false anywhere else and true, true, not anywhere else. Because if I compare R2 and R3, I have false and false for C1 and C3. So R2 will be true and true for C1 and C3. So that combination has no contradiction and it cannot be compared to rule one because in rule one, I have two truths. Okay, so there's no contradiction with any of the rules. So that's absolutely fine if I use C2 in uh, any of these, uh, that means R2, that is rule two. If I go to the next one, C, it says uh, two options in further that, that is C1, uh, true, 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 and then uh, false, true, true. So if you see, uh, I can only fit this into R1, okay, because R1 has two truths at the bottom. And the first one can be uh, true or false, anything. But even if I do it with true or false, anything, it does not contradict with R2 and does not contradict with R3. That means both of same, both of them are exactly the same and uh, they are not going to contradict with any of the other rules. Let's look at the last option, that is D. D says F, 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 which means false, false, false. And that can again go and fit into R2 and R3. Okay, both of them. And uh, uh, if you just check that, because uh, now that looks a little contradicting because false, 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 and false, false, false perfectly can fit between R2 and R3 both. 
But at the same point, the actions are different. For the rule two, the action is request to take the exam again. And for the R3, request additional driving license as the output. So in simple words, uh, that is uh, the R2 and R3 have different actions. So this shows a contradiction between the R2 and R3 if I take the option D as one of the uh, combinations. So I think that makes it very simple and straightforward that our right answer to this particular question is D, that is C1 can be F, C2 can be F, and C3 can be F. If I put it into uh, the table, R2 and R3 are contradicting with different outputs with same combination of data. Okay, so I don't know where exactly to put that. So that's how you should be understanding. Decision tables can be tricky at times. So you really need to have a good patience and good level of understanding that what exactly needs to be done in order to get to the right answer. And reading the last line is very important. If you do not pay attention to the last line, you lose the context of that entire question itself. So let's move on. The next question we have is question number 23. And uh, this one is related to straight transition testing. And uh, there's a diagram right there. It says uh, you are designing test cases based on the following straight transition diagram. And uh, there's a diagram. You can spend your time going through that, but seems like a very simple one that you are booking a room, hotel room. So you start with room request. You have the request uh, sent. If it is available, it is confirmed and it ends. Like you make the payment and it ends. You send the request. If in case uh, not available, it will be in waiting list. And then later when it is available, it will be confirmed. You make the payment and end. But from the waiting list, you also have an option that if it is not available for a say for example a particular period then it just gets cancelled and ends so there are three happy paths as per the given scenario to us so we have at least three test cases what we can talk about uh, for the minimum test cases right let's look at the question here the question says what is the minimum number of test cases required to achieve 100 percent valid transition coverage see there are two important things which i have told in my tutorials very clearly and at the same time, I'm repeating in my tutorials as well in this uh, sample paper playlist. That is, when they, the entire objective of all the test technique is to minimize. So minimum test cases is a standard keyword which you'll always hear. Okay, there's nothing uh, which we can compromise with or replace with. But the coverage will be manipulated. Like it can be sometimes minimum coverage, sometimes it can be maximum coverage. When we say maximum coverage, it simply means valid plus invalid. When I say minimum coverage, it means only valids. And in straight transition diagram further, we have a characteristic of straight transition diagram that it shows valid transitions only or valid paths only. That means all the three paths are valid for me. But when they don't specify minimum coverage or maximum coverage, this is how they will mention it. That is 100% coverage, which is maximum coverage, but valid transition coverage. So they clearly made it that we are asking you minimum coverage possible. That means only the valid ones. And anyways, we cannot identify invalid until unless we really have good time given to us. So we don't interfere with that until unless they talk about it. So keeping it straightforward, the options here are three, two, five, six. And the right answer to this particular question is three. That is three test cases are required. Start requesting confirmed and end. Start requesting waiting list confirmed and end and start requesting waiting list and end directly. So these are the three possible paths and that's the right answer, right? So sometimes it is just simple, but uh, we make it complicated. So let's not complicate things which are not required to be. But again, if you see, what did I discuss? That is the context and the concept needs to be very clear. If your concepts are not clear, that is where you would go wrong. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is question number 24. And this is coming from uh, white box test techniques. And uh, a simple one, you want to apply branch testing to the code represented by the con following control flow graph. So there's a graph given to you without any annotations. How many coverage items do you need to test? Okay, this is uh, supposed to be kept very, very simple because only if you have been through the tutorials, branch coverage is about branches right so we discussed this in the branch coverage tutorial uh, you would find that uh, here or here somewhere <laughs> okay 
So I button, just click on that I button there and uh, you would have it, uh, you know, what exactly you want to recap if you have not. So branch coverage is about the number of branches in the program. So every single line which comes out of the node is called as a branch. And that's what we test. So in simple words, all we have to do is count the number of branches in this flowchart because there's nothing given to you. That's the best part of it. And because they cannot ask you a K4 level given a program and sort of thing. So they have just simply asked you the definition that what do you mean by branch testing, right? So we test each and every branch, simple. So if I go back to the diagram and the diagram here, if you see, you start counting from the top, how many arrow marks are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, simple. Okay, we have eight branches and branch testing talks about testing all the branches. So if I just pick it up, uh, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is eight, eight test cases are required to test these branches because there are eight branches in the given uh, flowchart. So I think sometimes this is how simple it could be, but don't expect this to be simple all the time. Sometimes it can be complicated as well. So we are covering variety of questions to give you that level of confidence. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank <laughs> you.